PC, accounting for your future. Hi, this is Dave from APC, and uh, let's have a look at the ACCA paper P7, Advanced Audit and Assurance. Um, so, uh, one of the uh, top areas that may pop up in the exam would be the professional scepticism application. So, as we all know, uh, as the auditor, we we'll have to stick to the IFACT code of ethics, which means we have to be professional, we have to be integrity, uh, we have to be competent, we have to keep the client's confidential information unless it is not legal, and also we need to be objective. So in order to be a professional auditor, we have to exercise the professional skepticism, professional skepticism concept throughout the audit. So not only before we uh, uh, accept as a client to so a client's company, we have to be professional skeptical, which means we need to have a question in mind. We have to question quite a lot of things. So for example, before we sign a contract with the client's company, we have to think whether or not your client's company's reputation is good, whether or not you're going to set NC whether or not you uh, are involved in the money laundering activities, whether or not you are involved in other illegal uh, activities or activities that may damage the public health or public's interests. So we have to question about that. When we are doing the risks analysis, for example, we have to question, uh, I mean, um, is there a risk that the uh, uh, inventory value may go wrong? Is that a risk that the... Uh, Related party transaction is not disclosed. Is that a risk that the fair value may be wrong? Um, is that a risk if we were to do this and it will result in a wrong figure? Uh, for example, if we were to check the financial instruments figures, whether or not uh, this will be suitable, etc. So that's very, very important. And throughout the audit, not only in the uh, uh, pre appointment or, I mean, before signing a contract with the client's company, but also risk stage. Uh, I mean the audit planning stage and also uh, the substantive testing stage and also the review stage and also the audit report stage as well. So we have to consider, we have to question, uh, we have to have a questioning mind with regards to uh, the auditor when doing the audit for a client's company. And one of the ways that the examiner in the PCM exam may commonly test it with regards to professional scepticism is to relate that to the ML or money laundering, if you like, which means we're going to convert those crime money into the legal money. So uh, if you see the company with lots of cash, uh, so it's the cash based company, of course, it has a high risk of involving in the money laundering activities because you don't know where does, where does those money come from, yeah? So it's, a, it's, it's only cash spaces. So uh, when you're auditing those companies, you have to bear in mind. So let's have a look at this professional uh, skepticism article by the ACCA, quite a nice website. You can download these articles from getting started with ACCA and choose your study resources. Alternatively, in the bottom of the page, just so you can see that you have got the uh, my ACCA or ACCA qualification etc. You can do that whatsoever, no problem for that. And within the article, it just says that professional skepticism is uh, the requirement to be a professional auditor. And here's the uh, a few contents related to professional skepticism. First of all, uh, when we obtain the audit evidence, it should be. Uh, explainable and also consistent with other audit evidence that we've obtained. So for example, if the management says to you, the profit has gone up by 3%, but if we were to check the profit figure on our own, we find there will be only 2% of the profit increase. And this is not consistent, yeah? Because the um, uh, the management internally generated all the evidence is not the same as the auditor's Generated inter, uh, auditors generate all the evidence, and hence we have to be skeptical and have to question why this is the case, what's going on, and uh, you make the frauds, etc. And secondly, whether or not those documents that we've obtained are reliable, and of course, if they are not reliable, 
Uh, for example, it's only for the management size. I mean, it's the, uh, I mean, the least reliability of the uh, all the evidence would be the uh, internal, internally generated all the evidence by the management itself. And I mean, the management always lies to this because they have to protect their their own interest or maybe the shareholders' interest. So, thirdly, maybe there'll be a fraudulent transactions happened. Uh, so we have to question why this is the case. Because, uh, I mean, if there's a fraud uh, happens within the company, resulting in the financial statements being wrongly stated, as a result of it, uh, this is material by nature, isn't it? So we have to correct this issue, so we uh, have to be sceptical about it. So, uh, for example, the fourth circumstance will be related to money laundering activities, etc. So we have to be sceptical about that. So professional scepticism can be linked to the quality control that we've just mentioned in another video. Uh, because before signing a contract with the client's company, you have to be sceptical. You have to, I mean, check the client's company's identity. Uh, uh, its passport, telephone number, shareholder and directors registered carefully and deciding whether or not the company is involved in the money laundering activity, illegal activities or maybe not going, not being a going concern entity etc. You have to be questionable about those. So that's the reason why this is a requirement by the ISA here. So uh, the second part of this article is how does the auditor apply the professional scepticism I said to you, is the throughout the audit engagement for a client's company. For example, we're going to set the engagement acceptance, we're going to decide whether or not we should work for them, we're performing the work uh, or risk assessment procedures, we're going to think about the risk equation according to the audit risk models, inherent risk times the control risk times the detection risk. So, inherent risk will be related to the complexity of the balances that may arise. Obtain the audit evidence, uh, I said to you, those audit evidence may not be consistent with our audit evidence, and also maybe those audit evidence that we've obtained is not that particular reliable, so that we need to uh, question about those. Evaluating the audit evidence, that will be uh, just the same as we've just talked about. So, one of the very, very topical issues related to professional scepticism, and you have seen that, a few questions that have been examined by your P7 examiner with regards to this topic is closely related to the money laundering issues. As you can see, the examiner has specifically pointed out the fraud that may arise, particularly not only related to the money laundering issues, but also related to the related party disclosures. Because in some of the circumstances when the auditor is auditing the client's complaint, he finds out one particular transaction, the amount is so great, rather than just one dollar, maybe it's one million dollar. But this transaction is trading with other customer, but the customer is not an approved customer, for example, in the company's uh, uh, internal record, according to the company's internal record. As a result of it, from the auditor's perspective, we have to be sceptical. I'm not saying this transaction is absolutely wrong, but I have to be sceptical. I have to be aware of whether or not this transaction is the related party transaction. If the answer is yes, fine, you can do that, but you have to disclose it. If you're not disclosing it, of course this is material by nature. For example, if the company is not a going concern entity, you have to be sceptical because the company may use a wrong basis to prepare the financial statements uh, which is not in line with the IAS number one presentation of the financial statements. So instead of uh, uh, I mean, preparing the financial statements using a, going, uh, using a broker basis, maybe the company is going to use the going concern basis and hence this may be linked to the audit report which means you are going to issue a modification order report with the qualification opinion, with the adverse opinion. Of course, the accounting estimates, you have to be sceptical about those. For example, the allowance for receivables, the write down of the inventory, I mean, the changing from the cost to NRV. So you have to see whether or not the company's inventory is actually gets damaged. 
So you're going to perform the substandard procedures by uh, inspecting those inventory within the warehouse, etc. And also the laws and regulations, particularly if the laws and regulation comes up according to the ISA 315, identifying and assessing the risk of material statements of the client's entity through understanding its environment and also its business entity. And if there's a laws and regulation comes up uh, during the year, maybe prohibiting uh, one of the assets to be used by a client's company, so you have to be sceptical. Because some of the uh, property planted equipment may need to be sold off by the client's company, so this needs to be accounted for under the IFRS number 5, maybe. Or maybe, alternatively, there will be the impairment of assets as well, according to the IAS number 36, the impairment of assets. So, whether or not you carry out the impairment review correctly by comparing the carry value with the recoverable amount, how are you going to determine the value in use? Whether or not those discount rates that you've used is correct. So you have to uh, be sceptical about those. So those are the things related to professional scepticism, but mostly it will be linked to one particular accounting standard that the examiner may test you. But this is just to be a textbook knowledge, really. So you have to practice quite a lot of these questions related to uh, this particular issue. Okay, so that's it. And for the detailed content within this article, you can uh, go to the ACCA website to uh, look through that. And we are APC and we are ACCA Go Learning Provider. And if you need our help, please contact us www.globalapc.com. Okay, so thank you for your listening and thanks for your time. Uh, best of luck into your upcoming sitting P7 exam. APC Accounting for your future.